Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Multi-GP National Championships on now in Reno. GDU 02 unveiled. And IKO looks to create database. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The 2017 Multi-GP National Drone Racing Championships are now being held through this weekend at the National Championship Air Races in Reno, Nevada. With thousands of pilots currently having competed in over 70 qualifying events of the Multi-GP Regional Series, all eyes are fixed on Reno's many racing efforts as well as those of Multi-GP. In order to advance to the championship, top pilots from each regional qualifier advance to their respective regional final. Then the top two pilots from each of the 14 regional finals will be invited to the championship. These 28 regional finalists will be joined by 117 other pilots that have proven themselves through other methods, such as highly ranked competitors from the regional finals and universal time trial leaderboards. These 145 pilots will compete to see who's the best pilot in the nation. The rise of drone racing over the last two years can be attributed to the volunteer-run local multi-GP chapters. These organized groups are the key to drone racing's increasing popularity and accessibility. And if the action expected at Reno this week is any indication, you ain't seen nothing yet. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Following the devastation of Hurricane Harvey and Irma, AMA leadership has had conversations with EMS and the FAA on how to properly leverage UAS during natural disasters. Although TFRs are often in place to protect emergency response workers, AMA believes that UAS can be helpful with disaster relief efforts if properly managed. AMA is in the early stages of conversations with EMS and the FAA about how to make this happen, and we will keep you updated on their progress. Following the debut of Eric's Drones Da Vinci, Eric's has announced that they have temporarily paused production while they test upgrades for the video camera and its recording capabilities that will allow for 1080p versus the 720p originally promised. This will cause a slight delay, putting deliveries into October, but Eric's believes the upgrade will be worth it. Back in the realm of Washington, D.C., AMA tells us that they continue to work with Congress to ensure that our hobby is protected during the convoluted FAA reauthorization process. At this time, it's likely that Congress will defer any substantive decision-making on FAA reauthorization until later this year by passing a continuing resolution. While there could be changes, generally this would maintain the status quo for a little longer and give AMA more time to work with lawmakers and their staff. Drone company Toby Rich has just launched SmartPlane Pro FPV. The unique aircraft is made of ultra-durable materials and is built to survive the occasional impact and toll of model flying. Virtual reality glasses are included in this set so that the aircraft camera can stream live video to the pilot. The company includes an easy-to-use app that includes a flight school, stunts, and missions, while the smartphone control is easy to operate. The Aero News crew is assembling an expert, if not eclectic, crew of drone pilots and reviewers to test and evaluate the latest in unmanned technology for the AMA Drone Report, as well as our Airborne Unmanned Program for AUVSI. Commercial drone pilot and FPV racer Casey Seelock is on board, as well as former AOPA president Phil Boyer, who has become a serious drone proponent. We're looking for your input on what vehicles, accessories, and products we need to evaluate in order to give you solid info on the products that interest you. Requests may be emailed to jim at aero-news.net. 
That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. GDU has announced the official launch of the GDU-02. The GDU-02 has arms that slide into the body to give it a small form factor and extra endurance by making the arms out of aviation-grade aluminum alloy. Nicolie Wiles, GDU's Director of Digital, says that, quote, the new GDU-02 is versatile enough to appeal to both newbies and experienced users alike. The ultra-compact body of the GDU-02 is the smallest form factor for full-use drones and holds an even bigger surprise. It holds the remote control within the body of the drone, making it extremely portable. It also comes equipped with a fully stabilized 4K camera, obstacle avoidance, a visual navigation system, and a host of smart drone features. The GDU-02 provides for 20 minutes of flight time with a guaranteed 1 kilometer video downlink system included in the ship model. The price of the O2 model is $732. The GDU-02 Plus will officially launch next month with upgraded features and extended video transmission distance. The ICAO is backing an effort to create a single global drone registry with the goal of the adoption of common rules for tracking and flying UAVs. The idea will be discussed at a symposium planned for September 22nd through the 23rd in Montreal, according to a report from Reuters. Stephen Creamer, director of ICAO's Air Navigation Bureau, said that the single database would become a one-stop shop to remotely identify and track drones and their operators. The ICAO could become the operator of such a database, however, it is likely that users would balk at such a registry. The FAA's database was successfully challenged by a drone user earlier this year, and it was deemed to be illegal under current FAA regulations. The symposium will also cover issues such as geofencing, which is designed to prevent drones from flying into areas where they are restricted or prohibited. Kramer said that drone manufacturers are concerned that there will be a patchwork of standards in different countries, and they will have to make their products comply with multiple sets of regulations. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week. 